All right, so another integration method called integration by parts comes from doing the product rule in reverse. So let's call, recall the product rule for derivatives. It says that if I'm taking the derivative of a product of two functions, u of x and v of x, then that derivative is uh, the first function times the derivative of the other, so u times db dx plus the second function times the derivative of the first, okay? So that's just the product rule for taking derivatives. But if we rearrange this product rule, we can derive kind of a rule for integration. So rearranging this equation, right? We're gonna put this on the left and everything else on the right. So we're gonna have u of x times dv dx is equal to this derivative of the product u times v minus v of x du dx, right? So I'm basically just subtracting this from both sides of the equation, all right? And now if I integrate both sides, u of x times dv dx integrated with respect to x, right? And then we do the same thing on the right, u of x v of x minus v of x du dx dx, Right, and then I can write this as u of x dv dx dx. I'm not going to change this. I can split this up into two integrals, d dx of u times v minus the integral of v du. Okay, and then because this is the derivative, so it's the antiderivative of a derivative, so that just gives me the original function that's sitting inside here. So this gives me everything over here is gonna be the same. This becomes u times v. And this over here becomes, or I guess that just stays as an integral, v of x times du dx dx, okay? And sometimes this is written as just kind of removing these, these dx's, right? So just kind of multiplying these through. And so sometimes this is written as integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus integral of v du. All right, so in a lot of calculus classes, this is how they present that, but I think it's a little more clear with the full derivatives written out, okay? So this is just kind of rearranging the product rule and integrating it up. And so where integration by parts comes in is if we can recognize that this is the right form, right? So integration by parts is a technique that sometimes works depending on your integral, right? So if your integral is just some function, f of x dx, if you can recognize that the integrand f of x is some product of u times the derivative of some other function v, and if this integral on the right-hand side here, v of x times du dx is, you know, easy to integrate, then this is a good method. Then you can use what's called integration by parts, which is basically to use this kind of formula up here. Okay, so you can use this method. And the method says, okay, I rewrite my integral f of x dx as the integral of u of x times dv dx dx, which then I apply integration by parts to this, right? So if I know that the integral is u times dv, right? Well then based on this product rule derivation, the integral of u times dv is equal to uv minus v du in that integral, right? So then this becomes u of x times v of x minus the integral of v of x du dx dx okay so it only works if you can figure out that your function is actually the product of a function and a derivative of a function and then this you know complementary integral is easier to integrate than your original problem then integration by parts works okay so that's kind of the the formula for it but it's a little confusing until you kind of start putting it into practice so let's do some examples okay let's do an example 
And this example is called, oops, let's do e to the x, sorry, x e to the x dx. Okay, so this is an integral, and it kind of looks like there's a product sitting in there, right? So if we could write this out as a u and a dv, then we'd be in good shape, right? So let's try u of x is x and v of x is equal to e to the x. Sorry, not v, but dv dx, right? We want to recognize this as the product of a function u and a derivative dv dx, okay? And preferably something where you know the antiderivative, right? So if I know u is x, then I know that du dx becomes one. And I know that if this dv dx is e dx, then its antiderivative is e to the x, okay? So this might work as long as the integral of v of x times du dx is doable, right? So this is integral of e to the x times one dx. So it's just the integral of e to the x dx, which we know how to do, right? That's just the integral of e to the x just gives e to the x. So we've recognized the function as kind of this product of a function and a derivative of a function. And then this complementary integral is easy to do. So we can apply integration by parts. Let's apply integration by parts. Right, so my function x e to the x dx, I can rewrite as u of x times dv dx dx, where u is x, dv dx is e to the x. So I'm just splitting that into these two pieces here. Then I apply integration by parts now, right? Integral of u dv is u of x times v of x minus the integral of v of x times du dx dx. All right, and then I start plugging in the corresponding things. So u is x, v is e to the x, so that gives me x e to the x. This integral is e to the x times one, right? v times du dx dx, and that's easy to integrate. So I get x e to the x minus the integral of e to the x dx. Integral of e to the x is just e to the x, so I get x e to the x minus e to the x and then plus my integration constant. All right, and so let's double check that this is the right answer by taking the derivative. So let's take the derivative of my antiderivative to make sure that it's exactly what we had in the integrand. And when we do this check, you'll see that we're gonna apply the product rule, okay? And so you can kind of think of integration by parts as kind of uh, somewhat of an anti-product rule for derivatives, okay? So if I apply the product rule here, I get x e to the x minus derivative of x, which is one e to the x. Derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, so that stays put, All right? This is a plus, sorry. And then c becomes zero. So then this becomes x e to the x plus e to the x minus e to the x, so just zero. So I get x e to the x as my derivative which was exactly what was sitting inside the integral. So that is in fact the antiderivative. All right, so let's do another one, another example here. And the more examples of this you see, kind of the, the better you'll get at recognizing when this method is appropriate and uh, when it could be useful and when it can't be useful. It doesn't always work, just like u substitutions don't always work. But we can actually use this to define kind of a basic integral. So let's look at ln of x, right? So we don't know how to do this antiderivative yet, but we can recognize this kind of a trick here is that this is ln of x times one dx. So I can say, okay, let's let u be ln and let's let dv dx be one. Then my du dx is one over x and my v of x is equal to x, right? So just antiderivative of one. All right, now if I do this out, I can say, okay, well my integral, ln of x dx, that's actually u of x times dv dx. So I can apply integration by parts here. I get u of x 
times b of x minus integral of b of x du dx. Then we plug in everything in and it kind of works like magic. All right, so let's plug in ln of x times x minus x times one over x dx. So I get x ln of x minus the integral of one, which gives me x ln of x minus x plus a constant. All right, and that kind of seems like magic, so let's just double check to make sure. And when we double check by taking this derivative, you'll notice we apply the power rule, which confirms that this is kind of the reverse of the power, uh, sorry, not the power rule, the product rule. Right, if I take this derivative, I have to apply the product rule here. Right, so this gives me x times one over x plus one times ln of x. Derivative of x is minus one. Derivative of c is zero. So that gives me one plus ln of x minus one, or just ln of x. Right, so that is indeed what the integrand was. All right. So sometimes this is an obvious when to use integration by parts, sometimes it's completely not obvious, like in this case. Um, but sometimes it, it will be a little bit more apparent if it's very clearly a product of two things, okay? So let's do one where maybe it's not so obvious what x, or sorry, what u and what b should be, okay? So let's do this example here. Uh, x times cosine of three x dx. All right, so right now it's not even immediately apparent that we want to use integration by parts. But the clue here is that uh, if I'm thinking about, okay, let's make this u substitution, right? If I let u, let's try the u substitution first. If I let u be three x, then du is three, right? Sorry, du dx is three. And then this integral becomes x times cosine of u, and then we'll need a third to get that du dx dx, All right? But then there's a problem because we have an x and a u. So this is bad. All right, so u substitution didn't work. Let's try integration by parts. All right, but again, it's not clear which thing should be our u and which one should be our v. All right, so let's try u of x is cosine and v of x is x, sorry, not v of x, dv dx to be x, All right? Well, in this case, then du dx would be minus three sine of three x, and v of x would be uh, antiderivative of x, which gives us x squared over two, okay? But then in this case, right, if I write this as x cosine three x dx, which is u, times dv dx dx, All right? Let's apply integration by parts. That gives me u times v minus the integral of v du, All right? If I plug in everything, this gives me x squared over two cosine of three x minus x squared over two times minus three sine of three x dx. Right, and now what, what have I done here? I've taken something that was hard looking and now I have something that's arguably worse, right? So this is a more complicated integral. Okay, so we have to be careful about what u we pick and what dv we pick because not every choice is gonna make this simpler, right? But it doesn't mean that the integration method isn't going to work, right? we still have another choice. We could have picked u to be x and v to be cosine. And in general, that's what you wanna do, right? So now let's try u of x to be x and dv dx to be uh, cosine of three x, right? And in general, this is the case we wanna make because when we make uh, u the polynomial term, then we know every time I do integration by parts, the integral I'm gonna solve is gonna have a power one less than this this power, right? Whereas cosine is gonna switch between cosine and sine and cosine and sine. These powers are gonna go down the more derivatives we take, okay? 
So if I try this now, du dx is equal to one, v of x is now one third sine of three x, right? Because derivative of sine is positive cosine. So let's try this now. So we have x cosine of three x dx. I can write that as u times dv dx, right? So it's the same process as before, but I've switched what I'm calling u and what I'm calling dv, right? And that actually is gonna change our answer at the end of the day. So we apply integration by parts. This gives us u of x, v of x, minus integral of v du dx. All right, so let's plug everything in. Uh, u is x, v is one third sine, so that gives me x over three sine of three x. Here we will pull out that one third. We have the integral of sine three x times one dx, sorry. I won't pull it out. Integral of one third sine three x times one, and that du dx. Okay, and now this looks like an integral I know how to solve. Okay, so this gives me x over three sine of three x minus one third sine of three x dx. And I'm not done yet. I still actually have to apply substitution. I won't call it a u sub because I've already used u in this problem. So let's call it y equals three x, then dy dx is three. Okay, so let's change that integral. So we'll leave this one alone since it's already integrated. We have one third here. Let's multiply and divide by three. Or, or hold on, let's just do this first. Sine of y dx. I won't get ahead of myself here. This is only the first or second video with uh, u substitution. This is called the u sub, but we're using y as my, my u substitution variable. Okay. Um, we have y and dx, so we want to put the dy dx in there. So we need to multiply by 3 and divide by 3, right? So this gives me x over 3 sine of 3x minus 1 over 9 times the integral of sine of y times 3 dx, right? So the 3 and the 9 cancel to make 1 third. So I haven't changed the value of this. I just put a 3 there so that I can sub in my dy dx. So this gives me x over 3 sine of 3x, so we're leaving this part alone. And then over here we have minus 1 ninth integral of sine of y dy dx dx, right? And then we can think of that as just an integral with respect to y. All right, so then integral of sine of y gives me, so this is the same still, 1 ninth stays the same. Integral of sine is a negative cosine. Right, because derivative of cosine is minus sine. And then we have our plus a constant. All right, so to simplify this out, we get x over three sine of three x plus one ninth cosine. And we're gonna sub in our y, right? We want this to be in terms of x. So let's put three x back in there. Cosine of three x plus our constant c. Okay, so this is a very long integral problem where we first had to apply integration by parts. We tried it one way, it didn't work. We tried it a different way with a different u and a different dv, and we got something that was simpler to integrate. We still had to apply a u substitution to do this integral, but we were able to finally uh, finish this problem here, okay? So oftentimes we'll have to combine these two integration methods to kind of simplify things down to a simple integral where we actually just know the antiderivative of, okay? And the more practice you get with this, um, the easier it will be to recognize which technique to use and kind of which U's to pick, which DV's to pick, and so on. Right? So it just takes a lot of practice because it is not intuitive at all. Taking derivatives is, in my opinion, a lot easier than taking these antiderivatives. And it's just because it's, I don't know, it seems a lot more convoluted this way. Uh, but it is what it is. All right, so that concludes our videos for this week. Next week, we'll be talking more about kind of the different applications of the integrals besides just solving this differential equation problems. All right.